North Korea is arguably the most secretive country on Earth. This hermit kingdom is known mostly for human rights abuses, military provocations, and outlandish stories like former leader Kim Jong-il sinking 11 holes in one the first time he played golf. Hmm, I really want to know who decided on 11. We can't say it was 18 holes in one, that would be outlandish, but 11. That's a sweet spot. Let's not get it twisted. North Korea is a bad place. Between 150,000 and 200,000 North Koreans live in prison camps with an estimated 40% mortality rate. The government makes its money by exporting counterfeit pharmaceuticals, methamphetamine, and selling small arms to terror groups. And the culture is so repressive, they even control your hair. All North Koreans must have one of 28 government approved haircuts. Despite all this, the people still need to get around. But how do they achieve that in such dire conditions? Well, today on Wheelhouse, We'll be taking you inside the strange and mysterious North Korean car industry. Thanks to Monster Legends for sponsoring today's video. Ooh. You might be wondering why a totally real monster like me is doing these hardcore bicep curls. Well, I'm preparing for battle on Monster Legends. Create monster teams, level them up with runes and relics, and go on legendary quests to get incredible rewards. There are hundreds of monsters to collect. Plus, you can build a world for them to live in. There's also YouTuber Island, where you can find monsters created by some of the biggest YouTubers. Jack up your monsters, destroy your enemies, show your power. Become a monster legend, like me. That was a weird wink I just did. Download Monster Legends today. It's free to play on both Android and iOS. Click the link in the description by February 6th to get a bonus reward of 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, 10 gems, and the epic monster, Kaori. These costumes are so hot, dude. You rolling? Because North Korea is so isolated, there's no way to know for sure, but it might have the lowest rate of car ownership in the world. Experts estimate that there are around 30,000 vehicles on the road for a population of 25 million people. That's around one car for every 833 people. Imagine if a car was harder to get than a PlayStation 5. One big reason? Officially, private citizens can't own cars, so generally, North Korean drivers must have government connections. But there also aren't many cars to begin with because of the government's long-standing policy of isolation called Juche. It might sound like a fancy facial hygiene product, but Juche has actually been the official government ideology of North Korea for over 70 years. The roots of Juche and North Korea itself go back to the aftermath of World War II. Prior to the war, the Korean Peninsula was a Japanese territory. But after Japan surrendered in 1945, the Allies took it and divided it into two zones. The South, which was occupied by the US, and the North, which was occupied by the Soviet Union. Their initial intention was to set up an independent and reunified Korean government. But with Cold War tensions ratcheting up, the two superpowers couldn't agree on terms. So in 1948, two separate Korean governments were formed. The USSR installed a guerrilla military leader named Kim Il-sung, who previously had worked with the Red Army and the Chinese government to lead the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, AKA, North Korea. Kim created the Juche ideology, which was basically an ultra-nationalist twist on his friends Stalin and Mao. Juche directly translates to self-reliance. Kim believed that because, quote, man is the master of his destiny, his nation could only achieve perfection by becoming strong and completely independent. So when he took control of the DPRK, he cut off North Korea economically and diplomatically from most of the world and remains that way to this day. North Korea's devout isolation means that Western cars have never been imported into the country on any kind of scale. The only car manufacturer to make inroads in North Korea was GAZ, G-A-Z, which was founded and used to be owned by the Soviet government. The GAZ factory in Russia was originally built with help from Ford, and the first car built there was a Russian version of Ford's Model A called the GAZ A. During World War II, GAZ then built Chevrolet-designed military transports for the Allies. The factory survived heavy bombing during the war, and afterwards, GAZ started designing their own vehicles, including the M20 Pobeda. This stylish sedan was possibly the first passenger vehicle to be assembled in North Korea, because the Soviets built an auto plant in Pyongyang to produce the Pobeda, the GAZ-51 military truck, and the GAZ-69 off-road vehicle. It's hard to guess how many foreign cars have made their way into North Korea over the years, but it's likely that the most prevalent is the GAZ Volga. The Volga was a Mercedes style executive sedan built between 1956 and 2010, and during the height of the Cold War, thousands of them were reportedly exported to the North. Some of the few reporters allowed to enter Pyongyang have reported that old Volgas, specifically the Gaz 24, built between 1970 and 1985, are still being used as taxis today. 
So we've established that as a country, North Korea has imported around the same number of cars as Dan Bilzerian. That means that at least a chunk of the 30,000 vehicles on the road must be manufactured domestically. There are basically only two car companies located in North Korea. The first is Sungri Motor Plant. It was founded in 1950 as the Tokchon Motor Plant shortly after the start of the Korean War. Not surprisingly, the factory made almost exclusively heavy-duty SUVs, construction vehicles, and military transports. In 1975, the plant was renamed Sungri after the Korean word for victory. Most of the notable Sungri vehicles are copies of gas models. According to defectors, North Korean car makers at Sungri and elsewhere would use a procedure called anatomy plan drawing, in which they would import a foreign car, take it apart, and sketch the design of their brand new North Korean car by copying the pieces. The Sungri 58 is a clone of the Gaz 51. The Sungri 4 combined a Gaz 69 with a Jeep. And the company has also copycatted Volkswagen and Mercedes, among others. Like many things in North Korea, the government's claims about Sungri motor plants seem based in an alternate reality. In 1980, annual production was reported to be 20,000 units per year. However, experts say Sungri more likely turned out between 6,000 and 7,000 units per year at most. Sungri also claims to have built a truck called the ZR5000 that boasts a 1,000 horsepower engine and hits a top speed of about 200 kilometers per hour. But uh, let's just say it hasn't made an appearance at the Geneva Motor Show. The other car company in North Korea is called Pyongwa Motors, which means peace in Korean. It's a good name, since Pyongwa was actually founded as a joint venture between North Korea and South Korea. This was during a period in the late 90s, early 2000s, when South Korea adopted a sunshine policy that softened its stance towards the North. The deal was organized by the Unification Church, a quasi-Christian, quasi-cult based in Seoul that believes in the reunification of Korea as one of its core tenets. The church and the South Korean government spent about 55 million dollars to build the Penghua factory in Pyongyang, where the company immediately started building rebadged copies of foreign cars. Because of the Unification Church's connection to Mekong Auto Corporation in Vietnam, which had a licensing deal with Fiat, the first car built by Pyongyang was a carbon copy of the Fiat Sienna called the Hippela, which means whistle in Korean. Three years later came the Pyokugi, <laughs> meaning cuckoo, based on the Fiat Doblo. I'm sorry if I demolish those pronunciations. I'm really trying. After the licensing deal with Fiat expired, later models of the Hippolem and the Pyokugi were based on cars made by Chinese companies Brilliance and Shengguang. Meanwhile, the luxurious Pyongwa Zunma, meaning steed, is a copy of South Korea's Sangyong Chairman. Unfortunately though, Brilliance and Shu Wong are known for copying cars themselves, and the chairman is a thinly veiled Mercedes ripoff. So Pyongyang cars are actually copies of copies, meaning they look like the real thing from 10 feet away, but the illusion starts to fall apart if you get too close, and the car starts to fall apart after you drive it. From 2002 to 2011, Pyongyang built 6,368 cars total, despite a factory capable of producing 10,000 annually. The company reportedly turned a small profit in 2009 and 2010, but not enough to keep the Unification Church invested. After trying and failing to sell their ownership stake for $200 million, they instead donated it to the North Korean government in exchange for potential contracts in the hotel business. At any rate, Penghuan now has exclusive rights to build new cars and also sell used cars in North Korea. How do they manage that when car ownership is illegal? I don't know. Like I said, North Korea is very mysterious. We do know, however, that Penghua is the only company in North Korea that has ever been confirmed to advertise. A series of Penghua billboards and TV commercials were produced to show residents that their country is able to compete with Western automakers. It's worth noting one other car manufacturer which tried to build perhaps the only original automobile in North Korean history. It was called Pyongsang Auto Works, and it made a car called the Kangsang 88, which meant self-reliance or Juche Mobile. This car was loosely based on the Mercedes-Benz W201, which was whipped up after Kim Il-sung declared in 1987 that if South Korea could make cars, then North Korea could do the same. However, only a couple of prototypes were made. The resulting vehicles reportedly had no heating or air conditioning and were prone to fill with dust while driving. And that's not what you want in a car. There are only two categories of cars on North Korean roads. The military takes up a huge portion of the country's budget and employs 4.7% of the population. So it makes sense that many vehicles we see in photos from North Korea are made by the army, which reportedly has its own production facilities. There are also a surprising number of foreign luxury cars that have found their way into the country. Some of them are Volvos, because in the 70s, Kim Il-sung reportedly agreed to purchase a thousand Volvo 144s from neutral Sweden. The cars were delivered, but apparently Apparently, 
he uh, skipped the bill. Some of those free Volvos are still puttering around the city today. Photos of Pyongyang also often feature a 70s or 80s black Mercedes S-Class. One defector told South Korean newspapers that they're basically the official car of the government, and the higher ranked the politician, the higher up on the model line they get. Reports also indicate that some people in the government use luxury Toyotas from Japan. In fact, foreign cars were common enough that in 2007, Kim Jong-il ordered the confiscation of all Japanese-built vehicles, reportedly after one broke down in the street and blocked traffic. Western car makers got the last laugh on him, though, because during his funeral parade in 2011, his casket was carried by a Lincoln Continental limousine. Does the future of the North Korean car industry look any different than the past? The short answer is not really. At a trade fair in 2013, the DPRK surprised observers by announcing an absurd 36 new Pinghua models. But upon closer examination, experts confirmed that every single one of them was a Chinese-made car rebadged with Pinghua logos, new names, and one-page leaflets. However, there is one somewhat positive sign that maybe the people of North Korea will eventually get actual access to modern-day auto technology. Their current ruler, Kim Jong-un, the grandson of Kim Il-sung, is a car lover. In 2017, he visited a weapons and truck manufacturing facility and called for the need to establish a modern automotive industry in his country, according to Pyongyang's state media. Kim Jong-un also reportedly has an extensive personal car collection, surprise, surprise, that includes an Audi R8, Range Rover 5.0, a Rolls-Royce Phantom, and several Mercedes S-Classes in my box, all of which he somehow acquired in violation of international sanctions. Rumor has it he even has a special car just for pooping in. Weird. Of course, rumor also has it that it isn't poop or pee at all, which is somehow more believable than the 11 holes in one. Look, North Korea is an objectively crappy place. The vast majority of citizens are treated horribly, while a select few get to drive Benzes. The history of their car culture is bizarre and interesting, but mostly it's really short, which reflects the lack of basic necessities everywhere in the country. On behalf of our fellow enthusiasts living under the dictatorship, let's hope that changes sooner rather than later. Uh, looks pretty good. Donut has posters? Yeah! Donut has posters! Donut has posters? <laughs> yeah! Donut has posters! Donut has posters? Yep! Donut has posters! Wow! 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 <laughs> posters! Hang them in your bedroom, your office, or have them professionally framed for your garage. Get your donut posters today at donutmedia.com. Wow! 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 <laughs> posters! 10,000. I did it! I counted to 10,000 while doing six bicep curls. Anyway, don't forget to download Monster Legends before February 6th using the link in the description and collect your reward. Thank you very much for watching Wheelhouse. This was a pretty interesting one this week, I think. Again, very secretive country. Who knows when things will change. I'm gonna put a link in the description, donate to a good organization to help improve the lives of people living in that country. Be kind and I'll see you next time.